Dobra noc już jesteś senna i widzę twój cień na ścianie i noc jest tak... Hello and welcome to Early Childhood Ireland's podcast, which features interviews and discussions on all issues relating to high quality in the early years and school age care sector. In our episodes, we have a range of speakers who are leaders in the areas that matter to Early Childhood Ireland members. This podcast series is proudly supported by Aricus Insurance, which offers a comprehensive range of cover at discounted premiums for both business and personal insurance products. So visit www.aricus.ie for more information. I'm Maura Corbett and I work with Early Childhood Ireland. Regular listeners to the podcast will know that in 2023, we did a series of episodes about the lovely Our World of Languages project, which was supported by the RTE Toy Show Appeal in association with the Community Foundation Ireland. We call that project OWL. Well, this year we were again supported by the RTE Toy Show Appeal, and there will be more on that later. And the new project is called OWLET. Today, I'm delighted to be joined by my colleague, Dr. Christina Egan Marnell, to tell us more about this project that I have to say, it just sounds adorable. Christina is an early childhood specialist at Early Childhood Ireland. She's a qualified early childhood teacher. She completed an honours BA in early childhood care and education at the Institute of Technology in Sligo and a doctorate of education at the Victoria University in Wellington, New Zealand. Christine is passionate about advocating for the power of play-based learning and the vital role that early childhood education plays in society. She very much sees herself as a lifelong learner with every interaction adding a new perspective. Christina, you're really welcome and I'm really looking forward to hearing all about Owlette. Thanks, Moira, and I'm really excited for the chance to talk to our listeners and tell them a little bit more about what's coming very soon with Owlette. So tell me about the Owlet project. Yeah, so I think it's a really good place to start by setting the context in understanding that multilingualism is very much the norm now in Ireland. And as you mentioned, last year, our Owl project, we we found from talking to our members that it resonated so much with them because it was focused on supporting multilingual children and their families. And many educators and service providers told us how they were navigating a new path in their settings as they were supporting more children who were multilingual and they also had more children who were speaking English as a second language. And this is very reflective of nationally what is happening in Ireland because we have over 750,000 people who speak a language other than English or Irish at home and within those over 29,000 are children aged under four. So we know from this information that multilingualism is very much the norm in Ireland. So as we were speaking to members, we were also hearing about, we were hearing from them about their need for further support. So when we started looking into the research around linguistic diversity, we noticed how under two-year-olds were often overlooked in the strategies that were there to support language learning. But yet, there's over 13,000 under two-year-olds attending earlier services. We know that under two-year-old children have the capacity to learn languages. They can develop their own positive identity and develop an understanding of others. So we designed a project that would foster cultural awareness and inclusivity from a young age. And this became Owlet Lullabies of the World. One of the things I should say here is that Owlet is, is the term we use for a baby owl or a young owl. And we wanted this project very much to be centred on our younger children in our earlier settings. So our aim is to support children through Owlet to feel a sense of pride in their culture and in their language. When children have the opportunity to engage in play-based activities that positively show difference, they can expand their own cultural awareness. This is because children's natural curiosity about differences can be explored and can be guided in a positive, respectful and empowering way. Through the Owlet project, we have developed multicultural resources such as book illustrations and songs in different languages that can be incorporated into daily programs and curriculums. These resources promote empathy and inclusion and works towards preventing prejudice and discrimination from a young age. Christina, you mentioned that you're using lullabies of the, of the world. Um, why, 
why music, why lullabies? What's the research around um, music and, and lullabies, which is just so so gorgeous for the under twos in particular? Yeah. So with music, whether it's at home or whether it's part of the earlier setting, it is often a very big part of infants and toddlers day. When children hear music, they respond almost immediately to it. And when they hear music, they enjoy you can see how they're actively starting to engage in it. So reflecting the power of music, we focused on lullabies as the heart of our project. As lullabies are universal to all cultures. Working with our partners in the Owlet project, Mother Tongues, we connected with 10 different professional singers to support us in recording the songs to record these lullabies. We were guided by the singers on what the lullaby should be, as each lullaby is unique to the 10 different cultures and languages that are represented as part of this um, project. The singers also shared with us their personal stories of the lullabies and how they were often passed from generation to generation in their families. And also they often originated in folklore. So they really add this special dimension, this magic as part of those lullabies. Uh, each lullaby is special because it has different tempos, different energy, different length. And we are very excited for everyone to hear them. And we're delighted to be able to share a sample of them here. We have Brazilian Portuguese, Lithuanian and Polish. Se essa rua, se essa rua fosse minha Eu mandava, eu mandava ladrilha Com pedrinhas, com Christine, pedrinhas you mentioned with Brazilian, um, Portuguese and so Lithuanian and Polish. So Lithuanian and, and, and Polish. Um, what are the other languages that are included in the resource? So we have 10 different languages and they are Irish, Setswana, Hindi, Romanian, Creole, Polish, Latvian, Lithuanian, Brazilian, Portuguese and Spanish. And we didn't set out with any particular languages in mind that we wanted to include. To be honest, we wanted to include as many as possible, but we were guided by the different singers that we were able to connect with who had lullabies that they wanted to share with the wider community. So that's how we ended up with these 10 unique lullabies that will be part of the playlist and are represented in other parts of the project. And did you want to say something about the research uh, <laughs> that that's underpinning the idea of, of music and using music and, and, and lullabies to... Yeah. Um, underpin this this project? So when we were doing our research as part of the project, we were exploring lullabies and how they can have an impact. We came across lots of fantastic research that has been done. And I wanted to share with you two examples of how lullabies have been used in two very different contexts that doesn't always relate to education. So one of them was a study in the UK that explored how creating a lullaby could support the well-being and mental health of expectant and new refugee mothers and also incarcerated fathers. So the individual parents worked with a musician to co-create a lullaby that was just for their child. And the study found how this type of arts-based approach led to positive progress in integration, but also a greater bond between the parent and the child. Another very interesting study looked at Great Ormond Street Hospital and they found that children experienced lower heart rates, less anxiety, and a reduced perception of pain after they had lullabies sung to them. So this really showed us how powerful lullabies can be in supporting a whole range of areas and children's holistic development. This covers all children, um, but how can you take us through a little bit of how the use of of music and songs support uh, plurilingualism and cultural awareness, which is the main objective of Boat Owlet, really. Yeah. So music and songs can be an excellent tool in supporting plurilingualism because they can support multiple intelligences. When we are thinking about children, we need to think about how each child learns very differently. And that's where the idea of multiple intelligences supporting plurilingualism is really important. We can use music and songs to enhance language learning, 
develop cultural awareness, but also to foster creativity as well. For example, if we take a look at lullabies as a form of music within an early years environment, they can have a real tangible impact on many different people within this one small community. So for example, lullabies can offer wonderful benefits to educators and to services. Educators and other staff members within this service can feel acknowledged and valued when they hear their home language being celebrated. And a supportive workplace culture that celebrates different ethnicities can also support staff retention. With families and parents, if they hear lullabies that are promoting their home language, they can also feel like their culture is being acknowledged and respected in the service, which encourages them to speak more in their mother tongue to their children. It also helps to support those developing relationships between the home and the service. The foundations of the Owlet project are based on the principles of Ashtar. So in particular, looking at equality and diversity and communication and language. Those principles encourage us to view the child as part of the family unit and as a member of the community. This means respecting the culture and language that forms part of this family and community by linking it to the child's learning and development. We can utilise opportunities and when necessary, create them to promote the child's culture and home language which shows the child and their family that they're respected and they're accepted. As early years professionals, that also can include reassuring families that their home language is important and valuable to the child. In providing these different opportunities, all children in our spaces hear and learn about other cultures and languages, regardless of their age, and they feel included in the multi-ethnic society in which we now live. It's really interesting what you say there. kind of struck me what you mentioned about the impact uh, and the respect that it can show for staff from, you know, the while they, the target of this project is, is children aged between one and two, the, the beneficial impact um, on identity and belonging of educators as well. It's a really interesting point. I think when it comes to cultural awareness, any strategies or any activities that we introduce uh, with children in supporting them will have a knock on effect on all of us. We all share and uh, share in this space together. And these sorts of strategies are positive. They're play-based because we know that's what works and they will naturally have an impact because we're relationship driven. We can't help but feel for one another and want to support one another. So they all have a positive impact together. And and that sense of pride that, you know, if, if we're away and we hear somebody speaking Kupla Fuck Las Goelga, we kind of grow a little bit, don't we? We, we do, kind of we do, yeah. Our shoulders back and say, here's my tribe. Yes, absolutely. And that's the sort of um, feelings that we want to support children and families to to experience as well. We want them to feel included. We want them to stand taller and we want them to celebrate their tribe because we celebrate it, because we want to empower them. Because as a society, as a community, we only grow stronger when each of us has that strong sense of belonging in our own identity and belonging. So um, can you take us a little bit more through exactly what the materials and resources will, will consist of? And I, yeah, I am delighted that we have um, some of the, the snippets uh, as a taster of the, the gorgeous lullabies. So what does the, the pack consist of and how do members... Uh, access it. So for the Owlet project, we used an arts and a play-based approach in creating the resources. And we were constantly thinking about how would an under two-year-old child engage with these? How would educators who work with this age group use them as part of their learning program? So we started with lullabies and wanting to offer a musical experience. So we have carefully created a playlist of 10 different a cappella lullabies that represent different languages of the world. We specifically chose them to be a cappella without a musical background because this would simulate a lot more closely what it sounds like when a mother or a father sing to their child. These lullabies will be available for free for everyone on the Early Childhood Ireland website from mid-April. Another aspect of the Owlet project is a board book. So drawing on the magic that was created through the lullaby songs, each of the 10 lullabies themselves are represented through illustrations in a beautifully designed children's board book. We wanted educators and children alike to see and experience their culture being celebrated. The books were very much designed thinking about how an under two-year-old child could hold them, 
flick through them, engage with them, including mobile and non-mobile babies. So a copy of the illustrated children's book will be gifted to all Early Childhood Ireland members who care for children aged under two, and they will be shared uh, mid-April as well. And the third and final part of, of the ILEC project complements the music in the book with an e-learning programme. This has been specifically designed with educators in mind who would like to further explore lullabies, but also further explore cultural awareness and fostering cultural awareness. It offers a discussion on positive learning outcomes associated with lullabies, but also reflective questions for or reflective prompts on quality practice. And we look at different areas about how could you integrate lullabies into your daily routine to promote a better quality of sleep for children? How can you support children's emotional regulation and help to reduce feelings of stress? How can you enhance cognitive development? And just as importantly, how can you support children in having a strong sense of identity and belonging? So this unique and original e-learning program will be available on the pedagogy space for Early Childhood Ireland members and at the same time mid-April. It's wonderful. It's such a, a lovely, warm, supportive relationship based approach to, to, to take. And I think it's going to be a great support in addition to uh, to members who, as you say, work with that that age group that can be sometimes not quite forgotten about, but not quite the focus of of support. So, Christina, thanks so much for taking us through it all I really enjoyed the conversation and hearing about the lullabies I just think music is just so powerful there's a guy I follow on X Twitter his name is Vaughan Fleischfescher he's a Scottish music educator and conductor and last week he said that music is an essential component of a holistic meaningful and successful education and of course, many people know Colwyn Thrivarton, who talks about communicative musicality and how the exchanges between parents and, and children, particularly he talks about mothers and infants, follows the typical rules of musical performance with timing and me melodic narratives. And, you know, so often we kind of were conditioned maybe to think that music is for people who are good at it. And re really, music is an essential part of all our communication, particularly with uh, with young children. So, Christina, thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Maria. And I'm delighted to be able to share about this project and just to really inspire educators. There is so many benefits in using music as part of your teaching and learning. And you will probably already have a whole range of strategies that you can take. And this is just something else that you can add into your basket of tools. Yeah, I think very often it can be like background music. And I suppose encouraging educators to maybe be a little bit more mindful about the way they use it rather than just having a, a playlist on in the background uh, that isn't kind of thought about other than being just there. And having the lullabies on, on a playlist will be a great, uh, great resource uh, for educators to to have so Christina thanks once again thanks for pupa kasta pupa supa supa tete sir mama and now I'm delighted to also be joined by Maria Cleary Director of Funding and Partnerships at Early Childhood Ireland to talk to us about the support from the RTE Late Late Toy Show Appeal that made Owlet possible. Maria is the Director of Funding and Partnerships, having joined Early Childhood Ireland in 2022. Her academic background is in economics and politics, and her professional background is in human rights, in particular children's and women's rights. Throughout her career, Maria has worked with national and international NGOs, UN agencies, and research organisations. Her professional focus has always been on cultivating partnerships and growing funding in order to achieve transformative impact for an increased number of people. Her professional commitment to the early year sector is reinforced by her experience as a mother. So, Maria, can you tell us a little more about the support from the Toy Show Appeal and the Community Foundation of Ireland in enabling the, the Owlet project to come to fruition. Sure thing, Maura, and I'm delighted to be back on the podcast. Thanks so much for having me. 
Early Childhood Ireland was delighted to be chosen as one of the lucky recipients of the RT Gosho Appeal, which is changing children's lives for God. We are also proud to be working with the Community Foundation Ireland on this grant. Thanks to the grant, the project Exploring Our World of Languages 2, also known with a much better title, OLET, has been transforming the early years experiences of babies aged one to two across Ireland. In practice, this means that through the OLET project outputs, young children have been supported to practice language, develop positive, unique and group identities, appreciate differences, experience empathy for others, as well as pride in who they are. Thanks, Maria. That's It's great to hear about the, the, the impact that the OLET funding will have for our member services and really appreciate you taking the time to take us through that that impact and acknowledge the importance of the funding from CFI and the Toy Show appeal. Thanks a million, Maura. As always, it's a pleasure to be on the podcast. Thanks for having me. Maria, thanks very much for that message. And thank you for listening to this episode of Early Childhood Ireland's podcast, which is proudly supported by Aricus Insurance. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe and spread the word to your friends and colleagues and stay tuned for our next episode. 